I'm going to show you exactly how to self-study a computer science degree. Let's say you don't want to spend thousands of dollars and four years to get a CS degree, but rather do it in six months and get all the necessary skills fast for a low cost or even free. Now, at this point, it might sound like complete BS. So is it even possible? I want to clarify that no, it's not equivalent to a computer science degree. There is a reason why it takes a couple of years to get one. So it's not exactly going to be 100% equivalent. But through the way I'm going to show you, you can learn all of the most useful useful skills from a CS degree and do it in a fraction of the time. So why would you want to do this in the first place? Well, learning these fundamentals of computer science gives you a solid foundation for some of the highest paying jobs in tech. It gives you a deeper understanding of concepts in fields like data science, AI, machine learning, software engineering, cybersecurity, and just IT in general. Without the necessary computer science fundamentals, you won't really be able to do everything you want. So you'll always be limited in some way. So in this video, let's just fix this. Step one, the first step to self studying a computer science degree is actually deciding how much you want to study and how much you want to learn. Because here it's really all about prioritizing what to learn. You're not getting a degree for the sake of it, like many people do at universities. So you should only learn exactly what you need for your future job or whatever you're looking to do. There are a couple of different areas of CS and some are more important than others. And I'll start by just mentioning these areas and then I'll show you exactly how to actually self study them. First, we have the programming fundamentals. Now this is all about learning how to actually code, but also includes specific ways like object oriented programming and such. And then if you want to become a programmer, you'll want to focus more on this part. Now a CS degree isn't all that much about programming actually compared to what most people think. Next, we also have data structures and algorithms and data structures are basically ways of storing data, whereas algorithms are kind of like instructions given for the computer to execute both of these data structures and algorithms can be really simple or really complex depending on what's necessary. We also use computer systems and architecture and this kind of includes how computers work and the architecture behind them. You'll learn about the Turing machine, von Neumann architecture and build on top of all of this to understand the many different aspects of computers. Now databases are of specific importance and that is why a CS degree goes kind of into depth about databases, database design and also working with relational databases through a language called SQL or structured query language. This is relatively easy to learn by yourself. It doesn't have any complicated syntax and it's pretty straightforward. And it's also really, really useful for many jobs in the industry. Now we also have mathematics for computer science. And this is kind of the part that you'll spend most of your time on if you haven't studied this before. While computer science certainly isn't like a physics major or something like that, there are still quite a few challenging math courses. And the most common math courses for CS majors are calculus, discrete math and linear algebra. And for good reason, this part is going to be challenging. But now with so many great resources online, you know, tutorials, YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff, you can definitely do this even from home. Just imagine the people that were learning this straight from a textbook with no YouTube, no Google, no chat GPT, and no forums with millions of questions already answered. So you'll be fine. After this, you can also take a look at the theory of computation, you know, the more theoretical aspects of computer science, but I wouldn't focus too much on this now. It's just going to feel overwhelming doing all of this at once. And I think it's kind of good to keep the plan simple. If you know that you have 10 areas to study ahead of you, then it can feel really tough, especially if those are math and theoretical computer science. So take it one step at a time and also know that you don't have to learn everything, but everything that you learn is valuable in some way, although it might not be applicable to every single job right away. So now step two, how can you actually study this? Well, I've decided to put together a roadmap based on a couple of different courses available on Coursera. And this is because all of the material can be accessed for free. Now, you can also just use a YouTube course or find some other resource that's completely fine. I'm just giving you this example. If you do want a certificate after completing the courses, you will have to pay. But you can also just take all of these courses for free on the platform without a monthly subscription. So let's get started. First, to learn discrete math, we have the introduction to discrete mathematics for CS specialization from UC San Diego. Now this one is three months at 10 hours per week, I think you can do it a little bit faster, but it's also quite challenging. So perhaps not. And this one will give you a solid introduction to what discrete math actually is. Because frankly, if you come from a non technical background, chances are that you haven't even heard about this. And uh, next, we also have statistics and probability. Now this course from the University of Amsterdam will give you a basic introduction. The downside is that this is by no means the same level that you'll do in a real CS degree. It's just kind of an introduction to the field. 
But the point is that it's supposed to give you a general understanding of CS because we don't have four years to learn every single thing. If you do struggle with the math part, I would definitely recommend YouTube, but especially videos that involve exercises as well. For example, three blue, one brown or Trev Tutor for those kind of math courses. Next, let's talk about programming fundamentals. So here's a course that you can use to learn object oriented programming in Java. And this is what many CS majors learn because Java is a pretty good language to teach the fundamentals of programming combined with kind of object oriented programming. It is a very high quality course by UC San Diego and Duke University, but you can also just take something else, especially like with programming, there are so many different sites and resources available. You don't have to take this particular course. Next, we also have data structures and algorithms, and this is often really challenging for people, but here's a pretty good course that you can take. It's called Data Structures and Algorithms by UC San Diego as well. And if you want to study computer architecture and operating systems, you can take the Google IT support certificate, and that can really help as well. It's a little bit, you know, beginner friendly, just overarching, covering all of the different aspects. But I do think that it's really, really valuable as well. And it's going to give you a you know, general introduction to many different things. You absolutely don't have to complete all of it, especially if you have some experience before, but it can still give you a good, you know, fundamental understanding of IT in general. We also have networks, which I also think you can learn through that certificate. And again, you won't become an expert, but they do teach you the most important things today and what's actually useful. Now, a reason why a CS degree takes so long is because all of the theoretical stuff, you're not just focusing on programming, you're doing a lot of the, well, theoretical stuff and some of it is more relevant and useful than others so here you kind of focus on those aspects next we also have software engineering specifically and i think this course java programming and software engineering fundamentals by duke can help you with that as well it is beginner level it goes through things that you've learned before like in the previous programming course so you may want to take pieces of it but it can still be really valuable finally i think the course learn sql basics for data science is a pretty good option there are also a couple of other ones if you come from another field the third step Step is to specialize. So far, it's kind of been a very general introduction to the areas of computer science, but it is a very general degree. So to get a good job, you'll need to specialize in something and actually focus. And this is where you can really shine. Let's say you want a software role, then focus on learning the necessary skills for that role. And if you want to go ahead and work in cybersecurity, then learn those skills. Whatever you want to do, it will be easier with your new computer science understanding. I also recommend MIT OpenCourseWare and all of their courses are available for free. It's pretty much the same as on campus, just that you're accessing it on their website online or YouTube or EDX, I think. Now, it can also be really hard to stay motivated, so I do recommend courses with certificates and kind of progress reports to keep you going. It is always really easy learning the first month or at least the first week, but then it just gets harder and harder and consistency is the key here. Whether you just want to self-study for fun or get better jobs, I wish you good luck and thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.